Hello, and welcome back to Hoi 4, a country at war. The Carthaginian Federal Army under Zanet Menzeno, which I have a feeling, um, we won't be playing as her for too much longer. The Covenant, the Sword, and the Hoof of Equinity. What was, what was happening when Manzona was told there was a briefing for her about happenings in Hippone, she expected to be just to be the everyday chaos and complete lack of order. Not this. The reports were ominous. Squads of zebra and gas masks and black, black cloaks streaming out of the camps of the forest, executing any resisted, all avians shot on sight. Any government officials were killed. These weren't warlord militias. These were real trained soldiers. From Hipstone to Zapsa. <laughs> and even in Ziordu. These masked warriors unveiled purple banners and spoke of their leader, their prophet, the Star Father. How he would bring about a prophesied age of reckoning for the enemies of Equinity. Manzano could barely believe it. Was this what Tereshat had brought upon the land? An age of strife unlike any other, where battles were not for political gain but survival? Deep down, Manzano knew she was in overhead. But there was nothing less to do but fight. There were too many lives on the line for her to stop now. She may not be the greatest leader or the best general, but by Zal above, she had to save Colthage. General Manzano, Jazabzela has replied. She's willing to work with you. Zelthel and Zarkas are already on their way. Manzano nodded. There was a chance, a slim chance, that she could save Colthage. If there was any point in her life where she truly needed help, it was now. So Minzono lowered her head and said a short prayer for the first time in years. May the gods protect Colthage. The Menzano didn't know if she could. Yet gods could be fickle. Okay, I'm I actually really hope that you get a full focus tree at some point. Because the fact that you're bringing in like like so many differenting like opinions and they're working together out of necessity is so interesting. Also, um, we're not going to be protecting that area. <laughs> just, just saying. Just saying. It's way over there in the middle of nowhere. I'm not going to be protecting that. Oh, good. That's, that's very important. That's what we need to hear about right now. The Carthaginian Federal Army. We, we're all declaring war on each other, basically. The third civil war. The third Carthaginian civil war has come, and it's time to pick a side. General Manzino makes a desperate alliance with the Zarkids, Remnants, and the Harmonites, ready to defend the capital with her life. She must dictate the power of the balance of power between her allies to try and reforge a Carthage where zebras can live in peace. Gerzes has played his hoof. His criminal and gang allies funnel him guns from around the world. And his bribing of right-wing constitutionalists has given him an air of legitimacy. The Republic shall endure and prosper under his leadership. Just don't expect... Just expect that Republic to be a democracy. The Star Father has revealed himself to the masses. My brothers and sisters, the age of strife is now upon us. The final victory of equinity over the soul thieves is inevitable. Zalmar's servants will try and stop him, but with the lockstep legions and their grandmasters by his side, the cleansing shall begin. We shall endure, which is just staying as them, though they apparently don't even have content after the Civil War. We have the United Republican Front, but we are going to be playing... A very recommended nation, one that I've seen a lot of people love online, one that I have not played at all myself, The Covenant. Though I do know a tiny bit about of them, because I've seen them talked about on like Reddit before, but you know, I don't know too much. Hiram Zaraned. Biography. Born to a rich patrician family in Hippone, Hiram Zaraned had an easy life and could freely focus freely on his studies. As an adult, he enrolled in the University of Hippone and studied history, philosophy, hippology, and alchemy. During his time there, he joined a small secret society and quickly rose through its ranks due to his charismatic nature, eventually becoming its leader. 
Over time, the society grew in numbers, though it likely would have remained as such that had the government not collapsed multiple times in quick succession. By the end of the Second Carthaginian Civil War, Hiram's father followers had grown from a small club to legions of thousands. His teaching gained the aimless purpose and the destitute hope. Once he had gained enough support, he made the daring act of rebelling against Sarsach. Regime under the pretense of her being unfit to rule. As a direct result of this, his influence skyrocketed, and the knowledge of his belief spread throughout Colthage. To others, he was no longer Hiram Zerid, for his followers whispered a new name in reverence, while his enemies cursed the title that he had come, come to be known by, the Star Father. Now that the age of strife has begun, only time will tell what will come of this mysterious zebra and his new religion. Will he be content with brutally cleansing his homeland of evil he claims infested, or will he strive for higher, more terrifying goals? We still have the devastating famine we have to deal with. We also have age of strife. Lessons of the Father. Number one. In the beginning, there was the Godhead, and they were good. Then the archenemy, Zalmir, tricked the Godhead and shattered them. Only now, through virtuous actions, will the world be made pure, and the Godhead was all restored. Lockstep re legions. Mobili mobilization speed by... Hmm. So we get more organization, more recovery speed, but we get less recruit population and mobilization speed. The Star of Father is spoken, and his servants march. So we could get more conscription, though we can upgrade that anyways. Or we can go up to partial mobilization, but we can go up there anyways. So let's see. Let's just, let me take a quick look at what the, um... What, so, the things that we can't do if we don't do, um... So, all of this area can be done by either path. So, the one things I need to look at are the ones in the middle. For poverty, military, troops, um, troops and troops. Um, let's see, this gives troops, this gives things. Um, more of those. Uh, this gives recruitment population, just religion. Um, I'm gonna go with the March of Equinity. The time is upon us to get to rid the lands of avian influence and expel the crypto avians from our lands. We must ensure we have enough, str enough strong and able bodies bodied equins to beat back the avian forces. Yes, yes, of course. Must be done. Okay, you guys just, um, have fun. Here, have the most offensive general I have. Um, have fun over there. Bye. Um, good luck. Have fun. Okay, now I'm finally playing a nation I'm gonna stay as. This is why I, I'm excited to find out the lore of this nation. But, God, I hate going through so many civil wars. I, I, don't, I don't like going through a civil war most of the time when I'm playing Ho Hoi 4. I just really am not a fan of of civil wars, and I have to go through so many of them. But I've done it. It has been a success. So I can now. I can now actually. Um, none of those matter. I can't, I'm not going to be building anything yet, but might as well have it set up to be, um, no, no, or artillery once you're able, and throw on that, and that can appear there. So far I have zero ships.
So the Federation, the Federal Army seems a lot weaker. So I'm going to definitely deal with the, try to deal with the United Republican Front first. Um, they're weaker and they're surrounded, so they're definitely uh, not the expected winner in this. I'm going to do a quick save, I suppose. But yeah, I've gone in. I have gotten to this point before as Starfather. I even played for probably like a month or so, but I but I decided to stop because I wanted to play it for a for YouTube at some point in the future. I'm going to set you guys to go that way. But then I'm going to grab up some of you and tell you... Actually, I'm just going to grab some of you and order you to not do that and put you in a different general. Alright, you guys, good luck down there. We're gonna try to deal with up here as quickly as we can. If there's no one here, I'm completely okay with it. Okay. There are there are things up here. Oh no. Oh well. Actually, I would like you guys just to hold the line while I have these guys actually do pushing. Please do not worry about that. I just want you to deal with that. Where do I want to start with this? Yeah, we need more troops. The courage of equines of silver. It must be made clear that the soldiers that serve in our ranks are be the best of their order. Our soldiers must be trained from fullhood to never quake from danger or fear. And uphold the will of the Starfather, no matter the task. I struggle to talk while also fighting a war. Very much so. Like, I cannot fight a war while talking. I can just not. <laughs> just keep trying to push. Like the focus was bond four with the divisions. Um, requires either dominant aspirations or invincible aspirations. Um, okay, so these are the exact same things. Um, well, planning or logistics. So the aspiration of poetry has been reported not only as effective as soldiers, but as completely systematic fighters, not caring for style or impact when killing the enemy, and simply going for the quickest method. We must ensure that these warriors are recruited and deployed to the front line as soon as possible. I think we're going to get the invincible aspirations of companionship. The aspiration of companionship has been shown as ruthless fighters, devoid of any compassion or remorse. We must issue for a call for their followers to rally behind the enemy line and assist us from afar.
I mean, why from far? I was thinking they just assist us close up. Oh, why did why did you spawn over there? Why would I want you over there? Can you like travel over here instead? Thank you. Just just abandon that. That's fine. The unstoppable tide of cohorts. You must issue a call to able-bodied warrior families to serve the Star Father and aid us in the mission against the Crypto-Avians. With more troops on the field, our victory will be inevitable. Just take down that troop, then we can surround and defeat that troop. has been won in all but the destruction of the Crypto-Avian Spirit. We must issue a final call for Equine troops to defeat the Resistance once and for all. Except it's not, but we're just doing all of this path early as we can. Because, yeah, we, might, we just need a whole bunch of troops. Plus, you're weaker than them. So if, if I'm, I'm just, I'm just attacking the stronger nation, as you fight the weaker one. Exalt the equines of bronze and iron. Those who craft, making the best they can of this material world we are trapped in, are worthy of respect within ascendancy. While they do not contribute directly to the destruction of Zalmer, they are refutable of soul theft, and the goods they create for the cause are more than worthy of recognition. Throw you there, and I'll put um, I'll put you in charge. And just begin to push at uh, normal balanced. It looks like it's going pretty well.
Alright, let's go up to War Economy. Rebuild the hearths and homes. The home is the core unit of the new society. It acts as a sanctum where equines may live and practice their craft away from sinister forces. Away from sinister forces, but the hearth has gone out of the war in out in the war. We must rebuild for the good of our subjects. A safe haven. Hear me and rejoice, O spirits of equity. You have the privilege of being saved by the great star father. The mayor walked at the head of a vast procession into the destroyed city of Zapsa. The city's modern architecture had long since been destroyed in the Civil War. Hooves beat against stone roads with rhythmic pounding as the rows of zebras entered the city's limits towards the large gathering. You all have been brought here to witness something glorious. The equines of silver have guided you here to show you the teachings of the Star Father in action. Gesturing to the zebras gathered behind her, she declared, These are the equines of bronze and iron, the craft zebras of our covenant. They shall be those good souls who will build your city, and within a month's time, you will live in new homes. A city rebuilt in the image of pure equinity. Many of you shall join their ranks from day. I just realized I didn't change from what they chose, but I actually like what they choose, so they're good. Mm, where was I? A city rebuilt in the image of pure equinity. Many of you shall join their ranks some day, and if you can become talented enough at your craft, you shall achieve enlightenment and ascend as a true spirit of equine perfection. But that is many years of practice away. For now, give thanks to Starfather, for he is the one who has given you the chance to save your soul. On cue, the equines of bronze and iron began to a round of thunderous applause to the speech, and the audience slowly followed. The preacher stepped away from the crowd as a masked equine of silver approached her. You did well, Jezela. I'll take up it away from here and ensure corruption is purged from the city. Jezela turned to him and nodded. You, be, you best follow through on that, aspirant J Zacob. You failed the Starfather once when you did not kill that avian agent. You shall not fail him again. The aspirant gulped and and nodded before turning to his soldiers. Protect the equins of bronze and iron. Kill any corrupted who resist their work. At least we've got roofs over our head again. Roofs, hooves, haha, <laughs> funny. Uncover the tools of resistance. Upon the fall of the Archhaven's regime, our army shattered as the soul thieves descended upon our land. Weapons imported by the cartels were scattered throughout the land like dust in the wind. We must find these chachels and turn them against the wicked souls who held us down.
all of you push that way. Push as hard as you can. You must push with all your might, with all your strength. Push onward. Push into Colt Rubis now. This troop will hold them off from supporting. Good. Good. Go, my troops. Push south as quickly as possible. Quick. Before it's too late. Follow my lead. Follow my orders. Yes. Yes. It's all coming together. Nourish the bearer of the future. The old are often too corrupted by the influence of the avian to truly understand the teacher's word. But the young, the young have not lived a life in a world controlled by the avian. They can learn, they can grow into subjects the ascendancy needs. But, I think that's going to go ahead and be the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. And as always, peace.